everybody, um, Nate Butler here, and um, just got this uh, quilter, Micro Block 45, and um, I haven't turned it up at all. This is, I just plugged in, and this is my first impression. You're getting to experience it with me. Um, one thing interesting of note is it's always on. Um, as soon as I plug the power supply in, it's it's on. So, um, <clears throat> might be a good thing to know. Um, but anyways, right now I have the Tri-Q in the middle. And Master is all the way down and Gain is all the way down. So, I'm going to turn the Master up halfway. just for funsies, so um, just making sure everything's connected as it should. By the way, this uh, goofy little speaker cab um, has a, uh, a eminence uh, red coat in it, so it's, you know, whatever, but um, that's what we're plugged into. Sounds good. Um, I'm gonna bump the gain up just a little bit more. That's uh, <clears throat> pretty loud, actually. Um, I mean, it's not crazy loud, but. But I feel like I barely have it on, and um, uh, definitely not have any problems filling the room so far. Um, I'm going to move the EQ around here. That's definitely, definitely gets fendery. Simply because of the dimensions of the cab, there's not a ton of bottom in, but I, I kind of am expecting that. I can feel it pushing on my like my pant leg though, so I know the speaker's moving. Um, it's just not generating a bunch of nids. So I'm gonna sweep back to the middle on the cue. And then seems to be a nice tone um, it sounds a little bit like an a uh, clean or an amp that's so clean almost that it's almost overly dynamic so um, but definitely got a lot more mid-range out of it as I sw swept that uh, yeah so that's definitely more of like a hi-fi sound sweeping it back towards the fendery setting um, but all very usable sounds I mean that's very nice and this is very nice this is in the middle um, and it's not like it's losing bite it's just a lot more mid-range so so I'm gonna um for the sake of my own ears, um, I'm gonna go to the Fender side just for because that's normal. I play through a pair of Fender Princetons usually, so a little bit more of that Fender 
sound. Um, just because it's familiar to me. I'm going to back the master off and let's, uh, let's take the gain to noon and see what we get. It's definitely starting to compress a little bit. I wouldn't, you know, it's not like crazy amounts of gain, but it definitely smoothed out a little bit. is at about 10 o'clock so again not like crazy um, I'm gonna go ahead and take the gain uh, to about uh, let's say two o'clock and see what we get <laughs> So it's not like rip snorting distortion by any means. Um, uh, the, this is the guitar straight in, no, no, uh, uh, no pedals, obviously. So, but these humbuckers are they're fairly high output. Um, they're not like anything crazy, but they're not um, definitely not a low output uh, pickup either. They're humbuckers. <laughs> So, um, not getting much like growl yet, but let's uh, let's give it a. I want to take it all the way to three o'clock, and uh, or thereabouts, and see what we get. There it started to take off. See if the the EQ interacts with the gain stage at all. Yeah, I definitely feel like I get some more push out of it as it boosts the mids. So that's interesting. It means that um, regardless of the knobs, the tone stack of this is actually uh, <clears throat> pre kind of the gain stage of this thing. Um, so uh, at least to my ears I'm getting more breakup with the with the uh, mids boosted. So that that's interesting. Um, I'm gonna take it back to the Fender East side and just dime the gain and see what happens. <laughs> speaker fart out of it or something. Now, that's pretty gnarly. Cool. Um, I don't think I'm pushing this speaker. Now you got to remember this is a 45 watt amp so but I'm only running it at about 10 o'clock and definitely getting plenty of definitely loud um, uh, I'm a audio engineer by trade that's interesting hmm. and uh, hmm. don't know what's causing that but um, I would say it's probably 92 to 94 dBA when I'm playing that thing ripping so that's that's definitely good and loud especially considering the master is only at 10 o'clock so um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, sweep uh, through the uh, through the uh, EQ here 
here and see what happens. <laughs> tighten up the bottom end some um, but it did not take all of the flubbiness I'm experiencing away which I, I again I, I'm not familiar enough with this um, uh, eminent speaker to know if that's because I'm pushing the speaker really hard or because um, that's inherent in the kind of the gain structure of the so I'm gonna back the game up <laughs> Start to turn this thing up. Um, so that's like, man, there's a lot that happens in that last between three o'clock and and uh, I would say five o'clock is about where this thing stops. So. Who knows? I haven't hooked any pedals up to it. How? I, I don't know for sure how it takes pedals. Um, uh, that'll be an interesting experiment. But um, anyways, I'm gonna I'm gonna just back the, the gain off to about uh, I'm gonna say four o'clock, and I'm gonna turn up the master to halfway and see just kind of. Master and a half, and you would not have any trouble keeping up with most drummers. I play drums, and I would start to play harder because of this amp on stage right now. Uh, it's definitely loud enough to push me a little bit. So, uh, yeah, that's. I I don't know the speaker well enough to keep pushing, so I'm I'm gonna leave it alone. But um. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. It's pretty amazing that, uh, you know, something that, uh, minuscule, uh, can make my left ear hurt a little bit. Uh, it's definitely, uh, definitely ripping. So, um, some other time I'll hook up some pedals for it and, or to it and kind of give you my impressions of that. Um, but for right now, that's kind of my first first take you heard it with me so there you go peace <laughs>